I'm Professor Rad, and this is Pre-Calc Video 328, Establishing Trig Identities. So in our last video, we worked to simplify some trigonometric expressions. In this video, we're essentially going to be doing the same thing. We're just calling it something different. So when you go to establish a trig identity, the reason we're doing this in a pre-calc class is, uh, well, there are multiple reasons why. Um, one reason we're working through this is so that we can become more comfortable with trig identities and trigonometric expressions and properties. So when you get to calculus, you're going to be expected to know these trig identities. And so working with them now is going to help us remember them in the future and be comfortable working with them in the future. The other reason we're working through problems like this is because they're very proof-like. In fact, that's what they are. They're, they're essentially proofs that this equation is true. And when you get to calculus, you're likely going to be expected to work through some proofs. So um, many of the proofs that you'll be looking at follow a similar structure where you start with one side of an equation and you simplify down to the other. So that's another technique that we're building, um, kind of underlying the you know, direct application of working with trigonometric expressions. So for our first uh, expression that we're going to establish, uh, we're going to look at secant of theta sine theta equals tan theta. Now, you want to avoid treating this equation like an equation. What I mean by that is you don't want to manipulate the equation by moving one thing to the other side or vice versa. The reason we want to avoid doing things like that as much as possible is because when you do that, you assume the equation is true at the beginning. And we can't. We're trying to establish that this is true. So we can't say, well, since this is true, I can do this. Since my balance is, you know, uh, since my scale is balanced, I can go ahead and do these things. We don't know that it's balanced. So maybe it's uneven. Or maybe some of our techniques that we use to solve equations are going to result in extraneous solutions or erase problem spots. So instead of treating this like an equation where you move stuff from one side to the other, think of it like starting on one side and simplifying to the other side. So that's why we went through simplifying expressions in the last video, because that's really what we're doing here is we're starting with one side and we simplify it to be the other. So when you go to establish a trig identity, which side you start with is up to you. You wanna start with the messier side. You wanna start with the side where you're like, okay, here's a thing I could do to make this a little bit easier to work with. So for example, tangent of theta, there's not a lot I can do with this. I mean, maybe a quotient identity, but there's not too much that I can do to simplify tangent. Whereas with secant theta sine theta, well now I could rewrite secant theta in terms of cosine and then see if there's some more stuff I can go and do from there. So I'm gonna make a lot of noise with my marker cap and I'm gonna start with the left-hand side of this equation. So I'm gonna start with secant theta sine theta And I'm going to simplify this expression until hopefully I end up with just tangent. So um, that's going to be my goal is to try and get tangent in the end. So I know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's what I'm going to do first. So this is 1 over cosine theta times sine theta. And we used a reciprocal identity to do that. Now we can just multiply those, right? So that's going to give us sine theta over cosine theta. And that's just multiplication. And now we're almost done, right? Because sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tangent because of a quotient property. So this is equal to tangent of theta and that's from a quotient identity. And then um, my habit, once I get to the end here, right? so we've gotten to the other side of the equation, I usually do a little hashtag at the end. It's not really a hashtag, um, but this is uh, like a QED symbol, which is a Latin expression, um, basically meaning that which was to be shown has been shown. So uh, we've shown that this equation is true, that you can simplify secant theta sine theta 
and get tangent of theta in the end. So uh, that was a good example for us to warm up on. Let's amp up the difficulty a little bit and move on to example B. In example B, we need to establish that sine of alpha times sine of theta is equal to one half of cosine of alpha minus beta minus cosine of alpha plus beta. So in the last example, we started with the left-hand side of the equation and we simplified till we got to the right-hand side of the equation because the left gave us more to work with. On this uh, identity, the um, other side is gonna give us more to work with. So when I look at the right-hand side of this equation, I'm noticing some differences and some sums. And uh, so I can probably use the sum and difference formula for cosine. And that will give me something to work with to manipulate and hopefully bring it down to just being sine times sine, oh, sine of alpha times sine of beta. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with the right-hand side of this equation because it is messier. So it's probably gonna give us a better you know, start to simplifying. So let's start out with one half of cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine of alpha plus beta. Now, because we have alpha minus beta and alpha plus beta, this is telling me we should use sum and difference formulas. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is gonna be one half of, now cosine of alpha minus beta, cosine is cos cos sine sine opposite. So this is going to be cosine alpha, cosine beta, sine alpha, sine beta, and then opposite. So since this is minus, that's gonna be plus. Then we have a minus, so I better put some parentheses here so that I remember to distribute it in the future. And then I have cosine, again, of this time a sum. So same idea, cos, cos, sine, sine, opposite. So we're gonna have cosine alpha, cosine beta, sine alpha, sine beta, opposite of plus is minus, close the parentheses and close the bracket because there was this one half out front. And uh, now I've run out of space to write my reason. So I'm gonna squeeze it in um, up here and just write some difference formulas. Okay, so we took something that was fairly complicated looking and made it worse. So hopefully there's gonna be some magic that will condense this down. Also, the really good news is we're trying to get to sine alpha sine beta and we've introduced that into the expression now because of those sum and difference formulas. So this is good news. So I'm gonna bring down the one half and uh, I'm just gonna distribute this negative sign. So I'm gonna get cosine alpha, cosine beta plus sine alpha, sine beta minus cos alpha, cos beta, and then plus sine alpha, sine beta, and that's a, a distribution, a distributive property. Now I can combine my like terms. So I have a cosine alpha, cosine beta minus cosine alpha, cosine beta. So those whoosh, cancel each other out. Then we have sine alpha, sine beta plus sine alpha, sine beta. So that gives me two of them. So this is going to be one half times two times sine alpha, sine beta. I got shorter real fast here. <laughs> um, and so that was just combining like terms. Now, do not let these brackets uh, confuse you here as to what's going on. Essentially what we have is we have one half times two times sine of alpha times sine of beta. So I can get rid of those brackets. This is the associative property of multiplication that says you can change grouping when you are multiplying stuff. So this is the associative property.
And then half of two is one. So we end up getting sine of alpha, sine of beta. And I'm just gonna say half times two equals one. And would you look at that? That's where we needed to get to, sine alpha, sine beta. So here we are. So we can put our little, the end symbol there at the end. Now, one of the common mistakes on a problem like this one is forgetting these parentheses. And here's what would happen if we did. If we forgot to put those parentheses in here, then we would have had a minus sign in front of the sine alpha sine beta. So when we got to this step, instead of having two sine alpha sine beta, we would have had zero because the sine alpha sine betas would have canceled if this had been a negative. And so if we got zero, we would know something was up, right? Because we needed to get sine alpha sine beta. So use things like that to help you recognize uh, when you might've made a mistake. It was good that we got sine alpha sine beta into this equation because of, um, that's where we wanted to get to, right? So if those pieces cancel out, chances are we made a mistake because we needed them to get to our final solution. So you can kind of use that to guide you as well if you think you might've made a mistake. Okay, let's do one more um, establishing of a trig identity. Alrighty, so this is our last example for this video. We're going to establish the identity that cosine of V over one plus sine V plus one plus sine V over cosine of V is equal to secant V. So once again, uh, we have a very simple looking side and we have a messy looking side. So uh, let's start out with the messy looking side because we have two fractions. Um, I'm going to recommend that we add them into one fraction together. So here's what I'm going to say. Let's pause the video um, and see if you can combine these two fractions on the left to become one fraction. And then uh, you can unpause the video and uh, I'm, I'm going to have done the same thing and uh, we can check and see our progress and then we'll continue from there. All right, so um, I've gotten through basically just two lines of this um, to combine them into a single fraction. So um, what I did was I multiplied the first fraction by cosine over cosine and the second one by one plus sine over one plus sine. So um, it happened to be that the other denominator was the same as the numerator. So I ended up with cosine squared of V on the first numerator and one plus sine squared sine of V squared for the second one. So when I combined them, I just added across the top and got that as my denominator. Now, one thing I wanna point out, notice that I rewrote this problem. So um, I did take that whole messy side and I rewrote it, even though it was kind of painful to do so. So yes, you are expected to do the same thing. You are expected to rewrite the side of the equation that you're starting from because you need to start from here. So we can't start partway through the problem. We have to make sure we're starting with one side of this equation. Okay, so how about um, we do the distribution here up top? Um, so remember, you're going to have to FOIL that and uh, see if we can combine anything or, or do anything helpful from there. So um, pause the video and see if you can um, simplify the numerator a little bit. All right, so we're able to simplify the numerator a little bit. So um, remember, we can't distribute exponents, so we have to FOIL. So when I FOILed that out, I got one plus two sine V plus sine squared V. And uh, then I noticed that I had both cosine squared of V plus a sine squared of V. So I could take those two pieces, cosine squared plus sine squared, and use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite that as one. So that helps me to condense my numerator quite a bit. And now, um, let's see, if I do one plus one, I'm gonna get two, and then uh, we'll see if we can simplify further. So see if you can finish up this problem. Um, so pause, finish it up, and then you can unpause and we will check. 
All right, so were you able to uh, finish up this problem? So I was running out of um, board space, so I kind of had to squeeze it in on the side. So after I got the Pythagorean identity, um, I added one and one and got two. So I just added. And then I noticed that there was a two as a common factor in the numerator. So that factored out to give me one plus sine of V times two. The one plus sine V is canceled out, so I could simplify that. So that gave me two over cosine. And then um, ultimately we wanted to get to secant, so I got two secant of V. So uh, there's a little problem. We ended up with two secant V uh, when we should have gotten just a secant of V. So the problem is I copied this problem down wrong. Um, so we weren't able to establish this initial identity. Um, so that was my bad because I forgot a two here. Um, so now that there's a two there, we are good to go. Um, and it's been established. Now, um, in truth, if you have been asked to establish an identity and you are not getting to the other side, a um, few things to do. So thing one, check your work. Um, and when you go to check your work, um, don't read through it. Go back to the beginning and redo the problem from the beginning. And uh, don't rely on your previous work. See if you can kind of justify each step along the way. And if in the end you end up exactly where you were before and you're confident that you didn't make a mistake, then uh, contact your teacher. So if you're in my class, that would be me. And uh, see if they did what I did here and left out a two from the initial problem. Um, or uh, you can say this identity is not true. And here's your establishment that the identity cannot be established. So um, personally, I'm not ever gonna give you an identity that you can't establish at this level, of course. Um, so typically it might be a typo or a mistake in your work. Um, so I just don't feel like re recording all of this again. So, um, so I'm just gonna let that stand and uh, hopefully we can take a lesson from my mistake here. So that's gonna be it for um, establishing trig identities. And um, guys, in fact, that's, uh, that's it for trigonometry for um, this course. Um, our next series of videos are gonna be really different. Um, so the next, uh, the last topic actually for our class is about conic sections. So if we take a cone and we slice and dice it, what kinds of shapes can we get? So that's gonna be um, another way of thinking about some objects we've already know about and some objects maybe we haven't explored. So um, I hope this video gave you some good practice on establishing trig identities. Um, I hope that wasn't too disconcerting um, there that you didn't, uh, you know, get too frustrated trying to solve the unsolvable. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs> um, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.